So Didi is looking to enter the competitive Sydney ride-sharing market. Let's have a look at why they might be entering and what it means for riders and for drivers in the short, medium and long term. I'm looking at this from the perspective of someone with a background in finance who has published in several peer-reviewed finance journals. So we know a little bit about corporate strategy. So firstly, why might they be entering the Sydney market? Now Didi already has a presence in Australia and has been operating primarily in Melbourne for a little while now. So it's not like they need to set up operations from scratch. This gives them a bit of a launch pad to go into other cities other than Melbourne. Now the Sydney ride sharing market has been growing at around 3% per annum, which represents slower growth than been occurring in the past, but nevertheless it is still growing. Now that slower growth would suggest the Sydney market is approaching capacity, but it maybe isn't quite there at the moment. The Sydney market is currently serviced by Uber and by Ola, in addition to the existing taxis, which have been around forever. All right, so that's basically the background toward the M2. Now, why would Didi be looking to enter? Well, Didi already has an existing platform in Australia, which would suggest the upfront costs are going to be relatively lower than entering into a new country. Furthermore, the ride-sharing market in Sydney is relatively lucrative, comparatively speaking, i.e. the margins could be reasonable. So it's one of the better markets for Uber and Ola, at least anecdotally. So it's a reasonably lucrative market and they already have a presence in Australia and they can take advantage of some of the existing growth that might still come through into the market. Furthermore, Didi has a significant following from China and given how, uh, how much Australian tourism relies on tourists from China, that gives them an initial launch pad to enter into Sydney, i.e. there's an existing customer base that might use Didi over the other rivals. So there's a good reason for them to be wanting to expand. And they might try to take market share away from those rivals. They might try to get some new market share. So for example, if there are tourists from China that were going to use taxis rather than Uber or Ola, they might be able to get some of that market share. Furthermore, they don't just be able to leverage some organic growth. So that would be why they're entering into Sydney. Now this is more viable because there's already an existing presence in Australia. So they don't have those existing upfront costs or those new upfront costs rather that they'd have to face if they entered into a whole new country entirely. Furthermore, because they've gone through some of the regulatory process in Melbourne, it will make it slightly quicker to go through that process in Sydney. Now they'll still need to go through some fees, go through some government regulation, but they're already relatively more experienced with it than entering into a new country entirely. And some of those procedures from Victoria, which is where Melbourne is based, might carry through into Sydney which gives them a bit of an economy of scale in that respect. So that would be why they're looking to enter into the Sydney market. Of course, it's an open question about whether this is going to be profitable for Didi, but nevertheless, you can see some of the logic behind it. Now, the next question, of course, is what does this mean for riders? Now, this one's simple. Riders won't be worse off as a result of this and are probably going to be better off. Basically, when there's more competition, the costs of the service being provided are likely to be driven down at least to a point. So riders are probably going to be better off at least in the short to medium term as a result of this due to the increased competition, possibly driving down fares or at least stopping fares increasing too much. So that's a benefit for riders. The thing to be cautious about of course is as the market reaches capacity and becomes more saturated with all of these ride sharing companies, not all of them are going to last. So if some of these ride sharing companies start merging or falling over, then that will lessen competition down the track and obviously could lead to an increase in fares. The worst case scenario, of course, is if there are too many ride-sharing companies and then only one of them becomes viable, there becomes quasi-monopoly power, which is the worst case scenario for riders. That's probably not going to happen, but nevertheless, it is something to be mindful of. If basically, if the fares go too low, then the operators won't be able to continue operating and effectively, you're going to end up with less competition. So that is something to be mindful of but at least to begin with, there will be at least a cap on fares uh, implicitly because of the competition being brought in. The next question comes down to, well, what would happen to drivers? Well, drivers probably won't benefit significantly from this. DD generally promises riders, or uh, drivers rather, a better share of the revenue from their trips, which obviously looks very attractive. So riders could go over to DD and hopefully get a better share of the revenue. And or this might pressure Uber and Ola to a lesser extent to give drivers a greater share of the revenue. It's more likely that drivers would just switch over than Uber is going to budge very much on their revenue share. Because Uber currently is not making very much money as an overall company, so they don't really have that much wiggle room in terms of their revenue share. 
so it's more likely they'll just try to latch on to their existing drivers and some people might switch operators. Uber might be working on the premise that so many existing drivers are familiar with Uber, there's kind of a laziness tax that arises where people don't want to switch. And Ola itself has had historically some issues with its app and people aren't as familiar with Didi, meaning that uh, drivers might simply just not switch. So Uber might just become complacent in that respect. Now the question is then what might that happen to drivers' revenue and then drivers' earnings? Now say drivers shift over to Didi, they might get a greater revenue share, but at least to begin with they'll probably get fewer fares because the existing Sydney market isn't as familiar with Didi. Now the real problem however comes down to what happens to fares that are charged, because as more competition arises fares are either going to stagnate or they're going to decrease. If they stagnate, they won't keep pace with inflation. If they decrease, that's obviously bad for drivers, because Uber is probably not going to budge much on their revenue share. So if fares are decreasing, then you're going to see drivers having a decreased share of that revenue. That might force out some drivers. It's probably going to mostly impact the full-time drivers, as opposed to people doing it as a side hustle to and from work, because the people doing it as a side hustle are less sensitive to that revenue share because they do the trip anyway or they're bored or they have free time. The people doing it as a full-time job are the ones who will be more sensitive who might shift into another industry entirely. So what that effectively would then mean is if drivers start going down then fares in the long term might start going up if there are just fewer people providing the service. But that's a really long-term outcome that won't occur in the immediate beginning. And more likely in the short term and to the medium term more specifically the drivers are probably going to suffer a decrease in their earnings if there's a decrease in fares as a result of this, notwithstanding the increased revenue share that they might get going with DD. And to reiterate, part of the reason for this is it's unlikely that Uber is going to shift significantly on their revenue share. Now, this calculation would obviously change if Uber does decide to become competitive and to retain drivers by giving them more of the revenue, but at this point in time, it doesn't seem like that will happen because it didn't happen when Ola entered the market. So effectively what we're seeing for drivers is while Didi might look attractive, it's not likely to really help that much in the medium to long term and potentially in the medium to long term, if fares get driven down due to the competition, it could easily hurt drivers. And some drivers could ultimately leave the industry if the fares and the revenue share as a result decrease too much. So that's what would happen to drivers. The remaining question is what would happen to the rideshare companies? Now obviously more competition is not great for Ola or for Uber because it puts more competition or more pressure on the fares they can charge and maybe on their revenue share. Uh, like I've indicated, it's unlikely there'd be much wiggle room there. So if the fares start going down, that obviously is going to reduce the income for Ola and for Uber, so it's not great for them. Um, Didi of course needs to be mindful of this because if there's too many ride-sharing companies and potentially too much competition arising, i.e. you can attract more drivers and there's more competition, then as a result, you end up with Didi's revenue also decreasing. So you'll need to be mindful of that. Nevertheless, that gives you a bit of an idea about why Didi might be entering the market, what it means for riders, which is generally positive, and what it could mean for drivers if that increased competition ultimately ends up resulting in slightly lower fares. So I hope that gives you a bit of an idea about Didi entering the Sydney market, why it's going to happen and its implications. I hope the video has been interesting to you. If it has, it would be great if you click the like and subscribe buttons and I hope to see you next time. Bye.